What's going on guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. I'm back with a different kind of video for you today. So um, as some of you know, one of the rewards that was promised to my Patreon supporters was if I reached a certain amount of uh, support, I was going to do some videos about drone modeling. And so um, this is my first video. I kind of wanted to walk you through the process of how I selected a drone, what I thought about, that kind of thing, and give you some kind of tips and some things that I picked up throughout the process. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Um, if you are interested in supporting the show, if you do like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon in the links down below. All right, so the first thing I had to do was do some research on what kind of drone I actually wanted. So um, I wanted to get a nice drone, something that uh, I basically wanted to get something that had, had high-end features, it had a really nice camera, like basically if I was going to do this, I wanted to get something nice, um, not something where I was going to struggle to use whatever I came up with. So I wanted to be able to do like high resolution textures, if I was doing photo match from drone footage, that kind of thing, and also some other things too. So um, basically where I started was I kind of looked at what the leading drones were right now um, in the mid to kind of high range. Um, for consumers and so what I kept coming back to is it seemed like the drones from DJI were kind of uh, leading the pack they were the most popular they seemed like they had the most most features um, I did consider the GoPro Karma for a while as well um, that's the drone from GoPro um, one of the issues with the Karma though is basically it interfaced with a GoPro camera so it came with a GoPro camera and uh, and it seemed like a decent drone, but it didn't really seem like it quite had what I was looking for because I wanted some camera adjustability and uh, being able to adjust all the features and also tie into some different apps that do uh, some basically like site mapping type stuff. And I just really didn't see any of that from the GoPro drone. It did seem like it would probably be a pretty good deal if you wanted to take a bunch of action shots. Um, it came with like a case that's like a backpack and that sort of thing as well but really I kind of narrowed it down to looking at the drones from DJI and there were I believe four drones from DJI that I looked at there was the Phantom 3 the Phantom 4 the Spark and the Mavic Pro and so those are the ones I kind of went through and what I did is I tried to kind of consider a few different things um, I tried to consider you know the first thing that I tried to consider was image quality and resolution and all of that sort of thing and so um, basically the Phantom 4 and the Mavic Pro were able to record in 4k um, the Phantom 3 I believe records in 2.7k and then the Spark I think was still at 1080p so it was significantly lower than the others. That's still decent resolution, so I didn't disqualify it just because of that, um, but it did have a lower resolution. Um, these all these all seem to have pretty good battery life. That wasn't a giant um, consideration for me. The Spark seemed like it had little less than the others because it's a little bit smaller, um, but it did seem like a decent entry-level drone. So one, one of the big things for me was uh, being able to run apps and software because one of the things that I want to cover is there's some apps that allow you to do waypoints, which mean you can kind of set where your drone flies and then it'll take a bunch of pictures and it'll use, I think it's photogrammetry, to stitch them all into a 3D model. That was one of the things that I wanted to cover. And the Spark didn't have that functionality either. I believe the Phantom 4, the Mavic Pro, and the Phantom 3 all still had that ability. So that was another consideration. And then the last consideration was the cost. And so out of all of these, the Spark was the cheapest. I believe that one was like $4.99. Um, the Phantom 3 was a little bit more. The Spark was actually on sale for $349, but then I would have had to buy a remote for it as well. Um, but that was the cheapest option, and then the Phantom 3, I think, was sitting at like $499. Um, that one seemed like a really good option, kind of a budget option that kept you in a lot of the features and uh, without without having to break the bank. And then the Mavic was on sale, I believe it was $899 when I looked at it, and then the Phantom 4 was even more. I believe at the time the list price of the Phantom 4 was around $1,200. And uh, it was on sale for less as well. And then the last thing I considered, and it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with 3D modeling, is I was considering portability as well. I wanted to get a drone that I could take and put in my bag. A lot of you have seen the 
the pictures that I take with Bonnie when I'm hiking. And so I wanted something that was portable. So the Mavic Pro has arms that fold up and you can put it in a backpack. And then the Spark was a smaller one that'll come with a little bag that you could also put in a backpack. Um, the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4 are really large drones. And uh, there's, they're just not very portable at all. So between all of those things, I ended up going with the DJI Mavic Pro. Um, it's probably the highest or one of the highest two end on the list, but I wanted to get something that kind of did what I wanted. What really won me over was the ability to do like the drone deploy app and also the portability factor. But it seems like all of these would be good drones. If you wanted something for 3D modeling and you just wanted to get started, probably the best way to go would be to get a Phantom 3. That seems like it has a lot of the functions that you need. Um, it doesn't have the 4K recording, but honestly, I don't know if you really need that for 3D modeling functions. But I ended up going with the DJI Mavic Pro. So and I will link to all of these drones in the notes down below so you can check them out for yourself um, if you're interested in getting into this sort of thing. So far, I've been having a ton of fun with this. So uh, if you're looking for a hobby, this is a really interesting one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first of all open up the box and uh, we'll see, so this is, this is basically what comes in the box. So the first thing that comes in the box is the actual drone itself. And you can see how it folds up. Um, you can see how all the arms fold up and also the propellers fold up. And uh, when you get it, it actually won't have the bottom propellers on the drone itself. Um, so those will actually come in a little bag that comes with it. And it comes with, I believe it came with two spare sets of propellers. So it's got two propellers, so it doesn't have replacements for all of them, but at least has a replacement for a couple. Um, it comes with a charger, which I have over here. The nice thing about the charger is it has a USB port on the end, and so you can use the USB port to charge the controller um, at the same time that you charge the batteries for the Mavic itself. Let's see, it also came with some extra plugs. So these are plugs if you have an Android phone. So basically what this does is this plugs into your phone. So this is the remote and uh, this actually has a little cover on it that I'll talk about in a minute um, for protecting the joysticks. But basically what happens is this unfolds and then it's got a little plug and you can plug your phone in and it holds your phone right here. And actually one of the things I don't like about this right now is uh, my phone is older and it doesn't have a very good battery on it. And so whenever I use it, my phone battery actually dies really fast. Um, so I'm considering looking into an option to do like a tablet with this, like an inexpensive tablet. Um, I know they make mounts that'll plug into this, but um, so this is basically what comes in the box. I got a pack that also came with an extra battery. Um, and you can get those on Amazon. I'll link to that in the notes down below. And then I also got a pack that comes with a joystick protector. And also it comes with a Velcro piece. And the Velcro piece wraps around, it wraps around your blades when you put this in a backpack. So it's something that can kind of protect this. And so I am obviously not set up to do unboxing video here. All right, so we'll do this from the other angle. So this basically has a pair of arms that fold forward, and then the other two arms fold under. And you can see the front arms have a pair of, uh, they're basically like landing gear. Um, so basically what this does is when this lands, it lands on these two pieces and these little plastic pieces on the bottom here. So, and then the battery just kind of pops on here, just like this. So, super easy to pop that out, charge it up. Um, the blades, if you leave them like this, will actually spin out when the actual propellers start going. So you don't need to worry about unfolding those, I usually do anyway. And then you can see the camera is on the front here and it has a protective cover on it. I think you can fly it with the protective cover. There's also a clip underneath that keeps this from um, flying around because the camera is actually on a gimbal. And so 
what that means is you can see how this kind of vibrates when you move this. Well, basically what this does is it keeps this camera separate from the actual movement of the drone. So you can get super smooth footage, um, even if the drone's flying sideways or forward or back, you can still keep that smooth straight up and down footage. All right, and then the other thing to note is this runs off of a micro SD card. And so it comes, it comes with a 16 gigabyte card or mine did. I'm sure you can get packages in places. I want to say when I looked on eBay, there were more packages with other memory cards, um, or you could just get another memory card on Amazon. Um, there's probably some packs for that as well. That's basically, that's basically what comes in the package. Probably what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut to video from my first flight. And I will note when I first set this up, um, I had to update the firmware of the drone. And that was something with uh, the battery on my phone that uh, wasn't, it was a little uncomfortable because I was afraid I was going to run out of battery in the middle of that process. So make sure you charge your phone before you update the firmware. So we're going to go ahead and cut to footage of my first flight with the drone. What's up guys, Justin here. So I've got my uh, drone out here and I'm going to do the first takeoff. And I've never done this before, so we'll see how it's We'll see how it goes. I'm really interested to see how it goes. Uh, my main goal is to get it to take off and land without crashing. So we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna try to film it with my GoPro so you guys can see what happens. So you actually load the DJI app on your phone and then you use that to tell it to take off. I know you can do it with the remote as well, but it's a really easy process. And one of the things I was struck by is how loud the drone is when it takes off. Um, it's very noisy, but it's also very stable. As you can see, when I took it off, it just kind of floated in the air. Landing it from that height was really easy. You just click the land option and swipe sideways on your remote. So I'm really excited that it took off and landed. So now I think I can start messing around with it a little bit more. I don't think the horses got too freaked out. I'm a little closer to them than I wanted to be, but we'll, I'm gonna mess around with it some more. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on this. And then uh, the idea is we're gonna make some videos, taking some images and video and modeling from those. So um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, there's gonna be more stuff coming.